What's going on guys? Today is a great day because we finally have a new medieval combat game to talk about. And not just talk about, we get to play it, talk about it, show it. Uh, the NDA is lifted so I can show you the footage as well. This weekend we got to play the closed beta for Chivalry 2 from Friday to Monday. And I've been playing it non-stop, off stream, on stream with guys in the Discord. Anybody who wants to play, I'll join in and play with them because I cannot get enough of this. If you ever want to catch these sorts of things live, I do stream on Twitch. Um, I, w I do want to say a huge thank you to the PR team and the devs for not only giving me a code to play the beta, but for giving me some extra codes to share with people in the Discord. That really did mean a lot to, to have my... Because, I mean, I sign up for these things early. I do tell people to sign up, but normally when they come out, we do get a lot of people say, oh, I, I want to play. So it was nice to have codes to give out, so there was a good group of us playing. If you ever want to be involved in that, join the Medieval Army Discord. I try and make sure that I get as many codes as I can, and I, I try and make this as fun as possible for everyone involved. Um, so yeah, after a few days playing, I wanted to give you my first impressions. Please bear in mind, this is a beta test, so it's not the complete game. Everything is subject to change on release, and features might not be fully implemented or complete in the beta. So in the beta, we had two modes, team deathmatch and team objectives. I think that's what it's called, I can't remember. The team sizes are 32 v 32, which by the way, is carnage. If you think games like Call of Duty or Battlefield having 32 v 32 is mad, most of that fighting is from a distance in tanks, snipers, and long range assault rifles. But in a game like this, aside from a few people that play archers, you literally have 64 people running into each other, smashing each other with melee weapons. It is absolutely insane. In both these modes, you play as either the Masonic Order, the Mason Order, I think, in red and black, or the Agatha Knights in blue and gold. I'll go through the two modes, team deathmatch, you start out with two teams on opposing sides. Normally the leader will give like a quick speech or there'll be some sort of cinematic. And then it will zoom down into your character and you'll go from cinematic to playstyle as you all rush in together and scream your battle cries. Um, and it, it, it was actually insanely fun. Um, each team's got a set number of lives until one of the team runs out of lives and a winner is deemed. Normally, I would normally say this mode can be a little bit dull, but because of how chaotic the game is and how many people are there and how they've put the cinematics into this, it does feel really fun. Before you know it, the game's over. Before you know it, it's like, oh, the 10 lives left. And you haven't even been normally in Team Deathmatch, I'm like counting down, like, have we won yet? But yeah, this doesn't get old. I, 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 have, I can't get enough of it so far. Cornering you or coming up against you together and you're on your own. And you have these, these moments of intense concentration. You manage to get like the perfect block or parry and then you counter the next person. And then like you swing your ax across all four people and get like a multi-kill. It, it's such an adrenaline rush. I, I, I try and put some clips in of some cool moments as well so you can see how cool it looks. You know, the screen's covered in blood. You've got attacks coming from all sides and you normally die. But if you can pull it off, I'm not gonna show you all my deaths, but if you can pull it off, it feels incredible. Uh, but yeah, team deathmatch, pretty straightforward. The other mode is objective based, objective based, where you move across the map, either defending or attacking. Uh, if you've played Chivalry 1 or Maud Howe, you'll be very familiar with this. Uh, I've played, I think there's, Forgive me if I'm wrong. I think there's a couple of maps though. One is where you push through a city. One team defends with some trebuchets because they're trying to take out ships and the other's pushing in. Uh, that's more like a, uh, like a city with villagers and you're pushing through that city, that town. Um, and then the other one is a full scale siege. Uh, battering rams, uh, siege weapons, siege towers. Incredibly fun. Uh, there may be others that I'm just missing off the top of my head, but, but yeah, you, you get the idea. After the first day playing, the second day, I literally just played these objective modes all day. I just I just unticked Team Deathmatch and just played this all day because it's so fun. There's, there's some incredible moments that I'll, I'll try and... I don't know if they're all in this recording that I've got, but um, on stream we had some good moments where there was like these siege towers and some of my friends sat in the top with, with bow and arrows and then we pushed it. Uh, then we had some some others where like we made like choke points and people were funneling down them some some great moments on these on these uh objective based maps because you can really get your friends and push an objective and unless people are playing together you can really make it difficult for them if the game just releases with these two modes this is the mode i think they need to add more time and maps into because this is going to be the game seller these objective modes are so fun and so different every time that i really think they'll do well by making more of them. However, they have announced another one. They're gonna release free for all, I believe, uh, on release, that's on their website, they've said that. But I'm not sure if there's any other modes come in. I'd love to see like a dual mode or like a small map mode, like a, I don't know, like a 6v6 maybe. Um, 
I've played tons of this game over the last two days and me and a few guys from Discord have already planned to play it again this evening because it's just it's just bizarre how fun it is. The, the big thing I want to talk about other than the game modes is the combat. So a game like this will live and die based on its combat. For reference, I played Chivalry 1, I played a ton of Mordhau. Uh, one of my first streams on Twitch was Mordhau, I think. And if I had to say the game with the best medieval combat would actually not be one of these games, it would be Kingdom Come Deliverance. So yeah, for reference, that's the sort of combat I like. Um, so yeah, take that as you will. But I'm gonna go over how it works in Chivalry 2 and my thoughts. So first up, I'm gonna go over blocking. So this can be done either permanently by raising your weapon or shield, but it drains stamina very fast or pressing it at the exact moment of the attack to give you an opportunity to get a quick counter in. Uh, to be even better, you can parry an attack, so you kind of attack in the direction they're attacking, and it knocks their weapon back, and you get the attack in first. Um, very skill-based. That's very hard to pull off. Uh, it's done great, because you can actually win when you're outnumbered. So by getting these limited time events right, so let's say there's 2v1, you block one guy's attack perfectly, and you can quickly turn around and clip the other guy. Um, another great thing is if you hold block constantly, it's just not viable, because they'll just hammer you until your stamina breaks, and then you'll drop your weapon. Or if you've got a shield, it'll degrade the shield to the point where it breaks. So you can't just you can't just abuse the block system. It's you do it well and it, you can be rewarded for it, or you do it badly and you get punished for it. I think that's really good. Um, another another really good part is the the parry system. It's really hard to to get it right. I don't know if it's just because I'm new, or because I'm playing it like I would play Maud House, so I'm not timing it right. But I feel like it didn't register very often. Um, same with the blocks. Sometimes I felt like the blocks didn't quite register. But again, that could just be me not doing it right. Um, I'm not sure if you watch this, uh, if you watch the gameplay behind, you can probably see sometimes I'll go to block off from the right, they'll attack from the right, but it'll go just over my sword. Again, that could just be me not blocking right. Game's only about for a few days in beta, so I definitely need more experience. I want to get better at this. Onto the attacks, you've got a light attack, a heavy attack, a special attack, a charge attack. You can stab with the mouse wheel and then overhead attack, like bring your sword down with the other side of the mouse wheel. So like go up or down with the mouse wheel kind of thing. Um, and there's others too, depending on what you're using. So the bow has its own moveset, the shield has its own abilities. Um, there's like throwing knives and other cool weapons. But yeah, it's, it's very much what you would expect from a medieval combat game. And if you've played any like it, you'll feel very at home. Just different buttons, some little different tweaks here and there. Um, you can also perform feints. So going in for an attack and then canceling it. This is kind of like, not, not a pro move, but the people that use it will be better than the people that don't use it because people that are new to the game will get baited all the time by these feints. Um, so I highly recommend trying that. For some reason, feint is on V on the PC, which feels bizarre. Most people I played with didn't, hadn't, hadn't used it or just didn't didn't find it comfortable. So I'd highly recommend either, you know, if, you, if, if the devs ever find this video, um, maybe remap that. I remapped that instantly and had a much better time uh, because most people just aren't using it that, that I played with. Um, and then you can you can alter your attacks as well. So you can go in for a stab and then you can switch it up to another attack. For some reason, this feels super overpowered, probably because it's the beta and no one really knows how to play yet. But if you've come from Mordhau or you've played this sort of game before, these, uh, these switch ups are so powerful. So a simple thing like what I would do is go in for a strike and then switch it to an overhead. And nine times out of 10, the person would fall for it and you'd get you'd get a hit in or you'd get a kill. So yeah, like I said, the game's only about a few days. People people are obviously playing this for the first time. They've not played a game like this before and they, they were falling for it every single time. I, I don't think that's gonna be the case once the game's been out for a few days on actual release or like a week. So yeah, if you, if you play this on release, use these moves all the time and uh, get some easy levels, get some good kills, get some good wins. Um, but yeah, I really like how intense and, and skill-based the combat is because if you can master these abilities and you can just ask someone who's played Mordhau for 500 hours and never loses, if you can master the abilities, you will be at the top of your game and you'll, you'll be there deservingly. You, you will beat people in one-on-ones because you're better than them. And there's no, there's no like janky things that, that ruin that for you. Like I say, it does feel a little hard at the moment to pull everything off. Um, not sure if that's just buggy or my bad experience, um, as in me being bad at the game. But yeah, that's that's combat. Really, really, really like it. A few other things to mention. Um, dodging is really good. So there's like a dodge where like you press space and a button and then you'll you'll dodge in that direction. You can duck under attacks. That's really good. I've not seen that done this well before. Um, 
when you see someone ducking your attack, you know they're good. Uh, every person I fought for that ducked my attack, I think I lost to. So yeah, master that as well. Definitely a big fan of that. Um, you can block arrows, you can throw weapons, you can throw things you pick up, you can like pick up a pot and throw it, pick up a rock and throw it. Um, it's intense. People that master the combat will dominate the rest, which is how it should work. Huge fan. Overall, one thing about combat that is, is quite striking, something I noticed in my very first game, it's much slower than Maud Howe and others in the genre. Maybe I'm just getting older and getting slower reaction speeds, but the, this one feels a lot easier. I can see an attack coming, I have time to block, parry, dodge, or get my counter in. In hindsight, it might just, people, might just be that people still playing Maud Howe today have got years of experience and they've got 500 hours in the game, so they're just pros that are dominating you and they're the majority of players left. Um, maybe that's the case. But it's definitely refreshing having a slower style of gameplay and having a more even playing field. Everyone playing this beta has only played it for a few days. So yeah, it definitely is nice knowing that you can get a good few kills when you're not amazing at the game. Uh, you can also drag your attacks to get them in faster. This again feels super overpowered because most people aren't using it. Uh, so you look at someone, instead of just hit them, you hit them and look away and you drag your sword faster to get your attack in before theirs. That is really good. Again, if you're going to take this game seriously, I try and master that because it seems a little bit overpowered right now. So all the footage in the background is like my first day playing. I was playing it off stream just with a friend. Uh, and by the second day, I streamed it on the second day. And there is a clear difference between the people who were new and the people who played on that first day. The, the the difficulty from that first day I was topping leaderboards to the second day on stream was night and day. You can tell who's good. You can tell who knows what they're doing. It was super clear. People that didn't know what they were doing would fall for a faint instantly. And then you had people who could duck your attack, drag a heavy attack and knock you out with a war hammer in one hit. So yeah, if you're looking for a fresh experience with great graphics, the combat here is great. And I, I can't say enough good about it. Does it need work? Are there improvements here and there? Yes. But this is fantastic. Obviously the game's in beta, so a few issues I noticed was Archer seems super overpowered. Personally, I don't really play as an Archer, so I didn't experience it much. I haven't leveled an Archer up either, but they can seem to hit you from miles away, and if you get too close, they seem faster than you so they can run away. Um, and throwing your weapon is not a one-hit kill, so yeah, I find it quite hard to deal with Archers one-on-one, -on -one, but I never use the shield, so it's probably an easy target. Um, characters sometimes glitch around. It's a beta. Blocks and attacks sometimes didn't register that I covered earlier. Could just be me again. But yeah, hopefully this continues to improve. A little extra polish and this would be nearly perfect. It just needs, I'd say it's like 90% there. It just needs that little final finishing touch, which you're going to get after a ton of beer testing. Um, next, I want to discuss the classes. So unlike Maud Howe, I didn't see an option to freely create your loadout, unfortunately. I was looking for it every day to see if they put it in, but I didn't see it. You pick one of the four classes, and then you pick a subclass, and then you pick a weapon. They are three choices that you can make. That's like the agency of your character. When you level up, you do unlock new weapon skins, gold, and cosmetics, but there was no way to use them during the beta, so I imagine they just locked out that whole part. But yeah, class-wise, you've got the Archer, Vanguard, Footman, and the Knight. So each subclass breaks you down into a different type of build. Obviously, archers are straightforward. Vanguards are like lightly armored with a big two-handed weapon. Footmen seem like medium with a, with like a spear or a pike. Uh, and then the knight is heavy armored, two-handed sword. And then each subclass will give you a different variant of that character. So I leveled up the knight and one of their, sword, uh, one of their subclasses is sword and shield. Uh, I mostly played the Vanguard and the next guy, one of the builds, the subclasses you get for that is like a, a guy with two axes, like a Viking type guy, uh, two primary weapons as well. So you can throw your first axe, do a ton of damage and then just take out your second axe. Really like that build. Um, there's a guy who has like daggers, daggers and throwing knives. That's a cool little build. Personally, I didn't like it, but yeah, there's, there's something for everyone. There's definitely a good variety of different builds. Like I say, the footage here is from day one of the beta. So the majority of people haven't unlocked many new classes, which is why you're probably mostly seeing two-handed weapons and knights running around. Um, each class also has special items and special abilities. So the Vanguard that I played can throw like a pot of fire out, which seems quite strong. Another class has like an AOE heal. I'm not sure what the others do, because like I said, I didn't play everyone that much. Uh, some have additional items like throwing knives, uh, bandages to heal. You can pick up items around the map as well, so you can pick up like apples to heal, things like that. Um, overall, I think the system's really good. I like how simple it is, and I like how they've funneled different playstyles into classes. Big fan of that, because 
games like, I'm going to compare again to Mordhau, you have builds, but they're not characters that you level up. They're just a, a build template, really. My only issue here is they either need to add full customization, which would slightly damage the class system, because if you've got both, everyone's just going to make the meta build, right? Um, I liked here how every, every class is a little bit weak. Uh, not weak, but every class has its pros and its cons. Uh, which is good. You don't want to be best at everything. If you give full customization, people are just going to make the meta build. There'll be a best sword, there'll be a best secondary, things like that. Um, however, as it is currently, it's not enough. There needs to be more. Once I, I think I got the Vanguard to like a fairly high level and you run out of stuff to unlock. Once you've unlocked the last subclass and all the weapons, uh, yeah, after like level 15, there's not really much left to do. So uh, I don't know what they need to do here, but there needs to be something else to level through. Maybe a, I hate to say this word, maybe like a battle pass type system or some other form of vertical progression. Or a lot of people are going to get bored. People buying this game have been treated to games like Call of Duty, Fortnite. Um, unfortunately, that has become the meta now, hasn't it? So um, I think people, once they get to like, I think it happened with Battlefield 1. When Battlefield 1 came out, you could level up your, your classes. And when you got to the, when you got so far, you'd unlocked everything. And that got quite a lot of, uh, there's a lot of drama over that. I think you're gonna have a similar system here. Once people play this for a week and they max out the, the class system, they're gonna want more. And if it takes the developers then six months to get something out, people are gonna get bored. I think it needs to come out with a good, full, long progression system. Um, but yeah, who knows how that's gonna work. There's currency in the game as well, as I mentioned. Each fight, you unlock weapon skins and gold. But there's no way to spend the gold in the beer. So again, that's probably another system they've locked out. So I can't comment too much on the class systems because it seems like they're only showing us the start or they're not showing us everything. All I can say is I really like the split of characters and I think it's a great foundation. I just really hope they implement it further. Uh, another thing I want to mention is the humor. The humor in the game, really good. You lose an arm and your guy will shout, you know, it's only a flesh wound. You press different buttons to open wheels that give your character speech. Some are insults, some are funny comments. Um, really, really fun. Really fun, especially with friends. Really fun. Uh, you can pick up different things, like you pick up a chicken and throw a chicken at someone. Pick up a logs. Um, there's like this tournament ground. You can hit something and it spins a thing and knocks someone over. I'll, I'll try and show in the video. But yeah, there's lots of cool, funny stuff in the game. And I think even in the cinematics, the tutorial, the humor really does stand out. And that's good. I mean, these games, they're to have fun with your friends. Don't take them too seriously. Have fun. So the humor does match that. Overall, my first impressions for the game, as you can probably tell, are fantastic. I mean, my name on YouTube, Medieval Marty. I obviously love medieval games, so <laughs> I am biased in that regard. If you've played Chivalry 1 and 2, this game will feel similar and comfortable. It, does it completely redefine the medieval combat genre? No, it's more of the same, but it moves it forward, both graphically, technically, new combat mechanics, new objective gameplay. Uh, I really like the combat here. It's easy to play, but hard to master. You're gonna see pros playing this, taking on more people with ease, and you're gonna see people just get deleted. I really wanna see a 1v1 or a dual type mode um, to practice. And I really want to see some sort of ranked mode, what like recently got put into Mordhau. Big fan of that. There's nothing announced on their website, but hopefully something for the future. So maybe something they'll consider. The classes, really cool, but definitely not enough. We need to see what they do with the gold and customization after like level 15. But again, this is the beta, so I'm sure there's more behind this. They just, they probably aren't expecting people to hit like level 100, so they don't want to show that part of the game. I completely get that. I really like this game. If you like Mordhau, this is a refreshing change. If you haven't played a game like this, this is a great one to start with. It seems a little slower and people haven't mastered it yet. So get in early when you can play on a level playing field. I'm definitely going to be covering a lot of this when it comes out and I'm going to be playing it a lot on stream. The game comes out in June, I believe, on PC and consoles. So yeah, if you like it, get it wishlisted. Remember it's coming out. Um, and if you want people to play with, feel free to join our Medieval Army Discord. We've been playing a ton of it over this weekend. Um, like I say, we had some keys to give away, so we tried to get as many people involved as we can. Um, other than that, guys, first impressions, very good. Looking forward to playing it when it comes out. But that's just my opinion. I'd love to know what you guys think in the comments. I know there's going to be people who've played these games more than me. It's not, you know, I'm not a pro. You've probably got more criticisms than I have. Um, maybe this is your first Medieval Combat game. What did you think? If you haven't played it, maybe you've watched people streaming it. There was a ton of big streamers playing this. So, yeah, what's, what's your impressions? What's your thoughts?
If you like the video, drop a like, it means a ton. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more medieval goodness. But thanks for watching, guys. Bye.